So, quite recently, I put up a poll to see who was the most popular Chaotix member. And while I only had a small sample of the Sonic fanbase voting, we still had well over 6,000 votes and, uh, well, played out almost exactly as I expected. Almost. While I didn't expect Charmy B to win the contest, I certainly did not expect him to be dead last when I had also included characters that many would argue shouldn't even be among the choices. Yeah, Heavy and Bomb got more votes. I would guarantee a large chunk of people don't even know who those characters are. And seriously, look at the comments. You have more people complaining about who I didn't include than those genuinely upset about how bad Charmy was doing. <laughs> Which I found especially surprising because Charmy is one of the three Chaotix members who form the modern detective agency who keeps showing up to fill out the roster of Olympic teams. Even when they're not really doing anything, they're still around. Of course, you could say that about most of Sonic's cast, but that's a topic for another time. Still, I guess it's understandable that he's not the favorite of the bunch. Even back in his reintroduction in Sonic Heroes, Charmy has been known to be, well, irritating. He's hyperactive, absent-minded, and just obnoxious. Not even anatomically correct, he's got a stinger! Female bees have stingers, not the males. Well, who am I to tell the bug how to identify? Besides, if we're gonna compare him to real-world insects, there are a few more glaring inconsistencies we should probably address first. Or address silly inconsistencies, like the localization for Knuckles Chaotix here in America. He's supposed to be a little kid in the Japanese game, but the American Manual listed him as 16. Which I guess is just a fun little factoid. Sure, that won't have some drastic repercussions down the road. Despite the fact that his character was intentionally made to be as obnoxious as a real-world buzzing bug, he's still a consistent part of the extended cast of modern Sonic games. So I thought, what the heck? Let's dive into the history of the bug and see if we can find something charming about Charmy. But after doing some research, even knowing what I already know about the different canons of this character, I wasn't quite ready for what I did come across. I know I got corny and melodramatic while talking about Shadow the Hedgehog, but I feel like I should have saved all that sad energy for this video because things get rough. So let's see just how miserable things get, because we are smack dab in the middle of November Chaotix, where we are spending all month long talking about everything Knuckles Chaotix. Now for those unacquainted, when I point to this guy and say he's a B, it would be reasonable for you to respond with, uh, no he's not. And well, fair enough, he threw me off the first time I saw him too. Being a giant insect should make him the most terrifying member of the Chaotix. I mean, Robotnik certainly knows what bugs are supposed to look like, but apparently in Sonic's world they share the same face as armadillos and hedgehogs. But hey, if you grew up with cereal mascots, this might not have thrown you off too much. Charmy does look like he's about to bust a honey nut all over your breakfast. But like most members of the Chaotix, Charmy's journey does not start off with the 32X title. He actually started off, like a surprising amount of things from this franchise, in the old Sonic manga, where he looked like that. You know, I've already made a lot of jokes about the wacky character designs from Europe and America, but somehow Japan managed to end up with the single worst Sonic character design I have ever seen. <laughs> this sad Muppet with a B but loosely attached is... Charmy B. Really and truly. He first shows up after Sonic's alter ego, Nikki, no relation, and his dad go flying off and then get caught in Eggman's cocktail shaker, which gets Daddy Hawk completely sloshed. But when he tries the same on Nikki, he turns into Sonic, so it's fine. So since Eggman can't roofie the hedgehog, he's instead going to try and drown him. But no worries, Charmy wakes up and uses the time box to reverse time to make sure none of this happened. And if that seemed to come out of nowhere, it did. It really did. It turns out Sonic comics were out of their mind crazy no matter where you grew up. What's the time box? Who is this bug in relation to Sonic? How did he just show up out of nowhere? None of, none of it matters. Nothing matters. And here he is again, with his ass being used as a toothpick by Chonker the Hedgehog here. They did give us a design closer to what we would know Charmy to be. <laughs> be. But even back then, he was still a complete pain for Sonic and Tails long before he became a detective. And when Knuckles Chaotix came out, he would find himself in the other two Sonic comic series, America's Archie Sonic and UK's Sonic the Comic. Let's start with the Fleetway comic as he seems to get off a little easier in this version. And if you grew up an STC fan who's never read the Archie book, that should raise a couple of concerns for you and we will get to them. Do you have a group of friends who has that one guy? You know the one. The one who just gets under your skin. The one you can't stand. Not even sure why they're hanging out with the rest of the group. Nobody likes them. You just talk crap about them when they leave the room. And then talk crap about them again when they come back into the room. If you don't know who that is in your friend group, 
it's probably you. And I should know because I am absolutely that guy. Ask any one of my friends in Iowa. They will back me up 1000%. They cannot stand me. And that guy is also UK Charmy. Seriously, the entire Chaotix crew cannot stand this insect. At first, I couldn't blame them too much. He just talks in stupid doodly words. He's like a British Ned Flanders. The Chaotix straight up kicked this dude out for just making too many stupid noises. <laughs> And even when Charmy saves them all from a group of villains when he returns home with his colony and straight up torches them and then turns them into pottery, even after all of that, the Chaotix are still like, get out, get you and your stupid family out. And Sonic is just the worst to him. He barely knows the guy and is just a total dick. <laughs> Even when Sonic comes across what seems to be a kidnap attempt on the bug, he seriously contemplates just leaving him to his fate. I mean, yes, he does go to Charmy's aid, but even then he's saying he's probably gonna regret this. Yeah, I guess I better help him, but... Uh, this dude sucks! And when Sonic discovers that these are actually royal escorts and they need to return Charmy to his hive for some reason, Charmy is allowed to bring a friend to speak on his behalf, asking Sonic to his face to be his friend in his time of need. Sonic's like, I am not your friend. His top priority before anything else is just to make it clear that he is not friendly with this damn bug. <laughs> but begrudgingly, he once again helps. And even when Sonic discovers that Charmy is royalty, and the bee asks the hedgehog not to tell the Chaotix, Sonic makes him swear that he won't ever tell the team that Sonic helped him out. His cred is that important to him. I do not want to associate with this loser whatsoever. I don't care what kind of royalty he is. This guy's a dork, and I want nothing to do with him. Seriously, you guys think Sonic was a dick in Sonic X? You have no idea. This this dude was an honest-to-goodness jerk in the UK book. Were you a nerdy outcast in school? Big fan of Sonic the Hedgehog, but you don't really talk about it because you know the more popular kids will just mock you? Well, guess what, buddy? That's the type of person Sonic wants nothing to do with. He is that popular jerk who does not want to hang out with me. You does not want to hang out with you. It's okay to like children in the media as an adult, okay, guys? Stop making fun of me! It gets to the point where you honestly feel bad for the bee. And maybe relate to him a little bit. <sighs> God diggly damn it. He's there to be a punching bag, and he's under the impression that his friends are just playing around and don't actually mean all the horrible things they say. It was a lot more acceptable to just have your characters be dicks to intentionally obnoxious characters. But looking back on it today, this feels over the top harsh. He seems like a sweet kid, but is also a little delusional and a bit of a masochist. He's hanging out with the Chaotix crew by his own volition. He could easily return to his hive as a prince, but instead chooses a life where he's belittled by his whole team. At least in the modern version, there's still a sense of brotherhood between the detective agency. Charmy might be annoying to Vector, but it's in more of a kid brother kind of way. Espio and Vector still love the little guy. UK Charmy, hands down, gets the most disrespect compared to every other version of the character. But even when designed to be disliked, this is still not the worst the B had to put up with. <sighs> it's time to talk about Archie Charmy. Like his UK counterpart, he too was a prince of a royal hive who ran away from his duties. But thanks to Sega of America, this Charmy was a teenager. He's growing into an adult and would eventually return to take up his mantle and responsibility with his childhood friend, now fiance, Saffron, as his queen. So unlike the Fleetway version, he has no yippity yappity diddly dumbassity speech patterns. And his friends genuinely love him. He really is everything the British bee was not. And his life is trash because this bee has so much more to lose. Now, when it comes to Sonic comic writers on the American side of things, while there are plenty who have contributed to this franchise, there are two who stand out in any conversation. I am of course speaking of Ken Penders and Ian Flynn. Generally, nowadays, Ken gets a lot of heat, but you will still find loyalists who respect the world and lore he built in the older days. Ken was given free reign to get about as wild as possible because there was very little oversight and crafted something that was drastically different from everything else in the franchise. On the flip side, most fans generally love the work Ian Flynn put into the Archie book when he took over as head writer after Ken was fired, and was so beloved that they brought him on board when the Archie book was dropped and IDW picked up the license. Two very different creators, and for obvious reasons, generally if you adore the writing of one, you tend to dislike the work of the other. But the one thing these two writers seem to have in common is putting this bee through some real heavy shit. 
we would first discover Charmy's royal heritage in a knuckle story arc that kicked off with his childhood friend dying from an overdose of hallucinogenic drugs. USTC fans think the European book got dark? Well, hang on to your hippity hop hats because America goes hard and we are just getting started. So this story arc was a take on a crime thriller in the world of Sonic, which leads us to the aforementioned bug buddy Odin in a dark alley. And later on in the same story, Charmy and the rest of the Chaotix end up having a bad trip on some LSD laced chili dogs. Can you feel the sunshine? I can feel it inside me. I can feel it burning me. I am the sunshine. <laughs> And later on, we get this POV shot of Charmy undergoing surgery. And fun little factoid, a lot of comics in the 90s would represent their blood with black ink instead of red, mostly to skirt around some censorship. Oh, and would you look at that? There's some of Charmy's squirting out all over for all the children to see. The story ends with Charmy returning to his hive to bury his friend. But they weren't done here. Much later on, Charmy and Saffron would end up in Knothole to report to Sally that the Golden Hive colony had been destroyed and almost all of the hive captured in Robotnik's egg grapes. No, that's not a horrible fusion of fruit and fowl. That's a giant machine that harvests energy from living beans in grape-like clusters. And it's not some Matrix-like happy dreamland crap. If we look at the little status bars on the sides of these things, it looks like they drain the life force of their victims while also apparently wiping their minds and infusing them with toxins. I don't know why, just to be extra dickish, I guess. I don't think we ever truly see the end results in the comic itself, but the writers have confirmed that yes, they will suck you dry and not in the fun way. Bust a honey nut. It really goes to show you how little of a damn Sega gave about what we were publishing here in the West. That is, until Ken and Archie caused a big enough ruckus to wake up daddy in Japan and gave Kenders the boot. Now it was left in Ian Flynn's hands, and if you thought things would ease up for the little bee? Well, you might need to sit down for this next part. All right, so going by my previous comic videos, you would assume I am a big fan of Ian Flynn's work, and you'd be correct, but I don't, for a second, think it's perfect. It's true, I'm a little more harsh with his detractors, and because of this, you might think I'm biased and being unfair to other writers. And you know what? On some level, maybe I am. While there is legitimate critique for his work, a lot of the more baseless complaints come from people who don't know what they're talking about, who don't seem to understand that Flynn does not get free reign to do whatever he wants. He is writing for a licensed property, a mascot of a brand. This is a product to make you more interested in the franchise as a whole. And when you write for a corporate brand, it's not always about telling a story. It's also about solving problems and working in elements that the company wants in the book. It doesn't matter what they allowed in the past. If that's the direction they want to go with the brand, you will either figure it out or they'll find someone else who will. Ian came into the Archie book that had years of messy, messy canon and very little oversight. He needed to keep true to the world that had been built before him. I'll make it fall more in line with the game universe. And this time, Sega was paying much closer attention. That means means having to change up characters so they better match the version Sega made for the game. And if you recall, the American manual from Knuckles Chaotix listed Charmy as 16, but the modern version of the characters fell more in line with the Japanese version, who was 6. It did not matter to Sega that Charmy was treated as a young adult who was allowed to grow to a point where he was engaged to marry. All that mattered was that the game saw him as a child, so the book needed to reflect that as well. So did they do that by messing with time? Some goofy age potion maybe? No, 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 no. Oh God, no. What they instead did was torture the bee in Eggman's egg grapes and left him as a bee. <laughs> If you think I'm being insensitive, keep in mind that's a line from the Team Chaotix theme in Sonic Heroes, the same game where Vector called Rouge a broad. Yes, seriously, they did this. In the Archie book pre-reboot, Charmy is still not a child. His mind has just regressed to the state of a child. I want you to seriously think about the repercussions of this. Are you engaged? Are you married? Do you have someone in your life you see as your life partner? Can you imagine what it has to be like for Saffron? Charmy isn't the same person. And not even that, he is practically a kid. She's engaged to someone with the mind of a child 
who doesn't even remember that he was once a prince to an entire colony. Can you imagine how heartbreaking that would be? She's no longer his romantic partner. She's his caretaker. And I'm not overplaying that either. That's literally how they describe her in the comics encyclopedia. Yes, Charmy is written more in line with the game counterpart, and that was probably fine for brand new readers, but if you had read everything leading to this point, seeing Charmy talk like this is sad and unsettling. And Gator Jesus help me, we are not done. Saffron doesn't get a lot in terms of character growth, but she is a sweet gal and you can tell she loves Charmy more than anything because she's still there. Charmy cannot be left to fend for himself. He needs her. And because of that, that means the bug still has something, no, someone, left to lose. Because Pender won the lawsuit that required Archie to remove all the characters he had a hand in creating, they had to get all of them out without so much as a goodbye. And while I keep reiterating that Ken did not make the Freedom Fighters, she did help create Saffron. So, like all those Echidna OCs, Saffron was unceremoniously removed via Warp Ring, never to be seen again. This tiny little panel is where pre-reboot Charmy's story ends, about to be told by Knuckles that Saffron is gone with no way of bringing her back. And yeah, they rebooted, and now Charmy is a happy-go-lucky kid, but wow! It's almost understandable that a handful of fans are still really ticked off with the way things were handled. Flynn himself has expressed regret with the whole brain damage business, going so far as to keep Charmy out of comedic situations as to not seem insensitive. And yeah, again, Ian was put into a tough place, but ugh, this absolutely should have been handled differently. And thanks to all the ugliness from that legal battle, we will never get proper closure for pre-reboot Charmy. Yeah, the stories were all over the place, but it all ends here, in a silent silhouette. So, yeah, pretty heavy stuff for such a little bug, huh? Putting all of that aside, in the world of the games, Charmy is a kid. He can be annoying, but... Honestly, it's hard not to like the little guy. Especially since he's hands down the most overpowered character in Knuckles Chaotix. I sometimes wonder if they put in that stupid ring tether just to keep this bug in check. Unlike Tails, he can always fly. Instead of jumping, he just starts in a direction, and yes, it kills anything. And as my uncle reminded me, you can pull off a Robotnik and swing around heavy like a wrecking ball, leaving you pretty much indestructible. Honestly, Charmy is a lot of fun to play. And while we would not get any more 2D adventures with the bug, it's little surprise that Naoto Oshima would go on to be both character designer and director of Pino Bee, a 2D platformer where you get to play, surprise, a bee. And... <sighs> Look, I really don't want to end on a downer note here. Charmy has been through a lot thanks to some overly dramatic storytelling. But that's Archie. That's kind of what they did. I don't think it should have ever happened to begin with. He's better off as a kid, and Flynn was very sure to establish him as a child the instant he popped up in the IDW book. And he's just great in Sonic X. He plays off well with the stoic SBO and the loudmouth vector. He's just a happy kid, and that's who he's supposed to be. He's ADHD in insect form. Irritating as hell to the reptiles he hangs out with, but when push comes to shove, they love him like a brother. He's an integral part of the Chaotix Detective Agency, the Chaotix Freedom Fighters, and whether they like it or not, UK's Chaotix crew. Always sunny, always optimistic, and also a serious powerhouse in his first playable appearance. He doesn't need all this insane drama from the Archie series, but honestly, Saffron deserved way better. And apparently it still wasn't as bad as it could have been. Apparently there was a plan to take her out with piano wire at some point. For real, I do not understand how Archie got away with printing out this shit for so long. Charmy's never been my favorite character, and that seems to also be the case for a lot of you as well. But I appreciate the little guy, and understand why people come to the defense of this bug. Despite all we as Sonic fans have lost over the years, I'm certainly glad Charmy is still buzzing around. Because he makes this franchise just a little more charming. And that's gonna be it for the video for today. I know some of you like it when I ramble on for a bit after everything's said and done, but we got a lot left to do before this month is over. So I will see you next time. Toot toot tootly toot, <laughs> yickety yak to <laughs> buzz bumble, I don't know. So unlike the Fleetway version, he has no yippity yappity dippity He has no yippity yappity diddly dumbassity speech panter. He has no yippity yappity diddly dumbassity. God, it's so hard to say this line. Deep dop to the bop. I'm a sky man. Skibbity bebop. Woody yippity yap dop. Dada. I hate this stupid bee.